So, hello and welcome. So, in the next couple of minutes, um, we are going to talk about the Hive and the iceberg integration and what we did. My name is Atinan Turoci and my colleague is... Simhadri Goindapa. And let's jump into the middle of what we have actually for today. So, let's see what we have. We have some kind of agenda that we will talk about the backgrounds that we have actually with the Hive. Also, we will talk about the features. We will spotlight some kind of features that we would love to really share about the community what we did in the last couple of years. And also in the end of the uh, meetings, or I don't know if this meetings, I would say our manager, end of the session, we are going to talk about the performance and how we change the performance and the preconception about the Hive. So let's do the background part. What is Hive, what is Iberg, and how we, are, how we implemented it? So, I would say the Hive is a distributed and faltering and data warehousing solution that m most of the company use it. Some company love it, some company does not love it. We, we, have, we know it. But also, I would say most of these big 500, Fortune 500 companies use, and in the background, um, so many, I would say, big banks, um, airplane company, Emirates, Lufthansa, and others also use this one. And uh, they, we in the Hive, we have several types of flexibility because in the Hive we have engines. We are, you are able to choose what kind of engine you would love to use. It is an MR for the old part of legacy. Also, you are able to use TES or LLAP. It is up to you what is your best fit for your part. For the query planner, we're using Apache Car site. Um, and also, nowadays, uh, we have an, a pretty cool HS2 support, where we, uh, which is HA support as well. And uh, on the Hive side, we also have, I would say, a table format that we did. We were the pioneers. We were the first who has created ACID in the big data world. And also, just because we were the first, sometimes we made a mistake. Some company did not like the first part of the Hive ACID, how does it work, but still, actually, they use it. Um, so as you see in this slide, uh, so this is Hive. So Hive, you can broadly say, is con has four parts. So one would be the HMS. Most of you would have heard of it. Uh, it stores the metadata information that's necessary to query the tables. And then we have the Hive server too, where the driver resides. And the driver, uh, so clients connect to the Hive server too via VLAN. And then uh, HS2 also is the entry point for the query and the execution engines. And the security and authorization is also handled in the Hive server too. So these are the two parts of Hive. And then we have table maintenance, which is basically compaction, statistics collection, and a bunch of other things that run to make sure Hive runs in the most optimized manner. And then we have the Hive table format. Uh, one of them being Hive Acid. I mean, you could. So in the next slide, we'll see Hive table types or formats, I guess. So Hive table uh, t can be divided into external tables and managed tables. So managed tables are insert-only tables, and we also have full ACID tables or the Hive ACID table format, which give you ACID uh, guarantees on your table. And, th and that is what will be the star of this presentation next. Uh, so, And now, actually, from the Hive 4.0, we introduced the, hi uh, the iceberg support itself. So. It is one of the coolest, I would say, technology right now in the market. So many com companies, so many big companies started to utilize it, and it's not for an accident. It is something that everybody started to realize that we need something that is special, something that is well-performed, and way more better in the, in the world where we are living right now, especially that is work even on an on-premise environment, even on a cloud environment. And Iceberg, actually, it's a new table format. It's not a file format. It's a table format and we can utilize actually those type of um, functionality features that the standards provide for us. So in simple words, if you're a fan of Pokemon, we can say Hive Acid, uh, okay, Iceberg is the evolved form of Hive Acid, or the next generation table format. It still support the Hive Acid. Yes. Okay, so now with Iceberg, as you can see, we, uh, the HMS, HS2, and table maintenance remain the same. So we have done a lot of improvements to make it work with the latest and the greatest high, uh, iceberg table format. Okay. So in the next part of the presentation, we will discuss about all the developments we have done 
for the other parts of hive so that it works seamlessly with iceberg. Okay, okay. so the storage yeah. handler. So how, how, we, how have we integrated iceberg with hive? So hive provides storage handler interface that makes it possible to allow hive to access data stored and managed by other systems in a modular and extensible fashion. So uh, we can use the stored by clause to create a storage handler table. Uh, for iceberg we use the stored by iceberg clause. So hive storage handler also allows us to define input format, output format and serialization and deserialization libraries for any of the storage handler. For iceberg we have defined the hive iceberg input format, uh, hive iceberg output format and the hive iceberg survey. So finally we have the hive iceberg storage handler which allows us to read write iceberg tables via the same hive ice by the same high queries. Okay. So, but let's start actually what kind of feature do we have? And let's start with the boring one, the DDL and the DML. So, from the iceberg perspective, if you use Hive, or even you use actually any type of CQL, you, I would say the message actually for this presentation is, please remember these three words, stored by iceberg. This is the three words that you need to remember, and after that, every single CQL query that you had it before, it will work automatically and magically. So if you would love to create an extra a table, do it. If you want to drop it, insert it, uh, or actually just delete it, do it. Just one thing when you are creating a table, stored by iceberg. After that, all of the features said that you can get from the iceberg, immediately you can get it, even the performance you will get it. So just three words, and automatically happens. But this is, I would say, just the DML is just boring because if I would say that, okay, you will have the same CQL that did before, that is meh, whatever. But we have a, in the iceberg we have so many new features and one of the coolest ones that I, I truly love is the branching support. Not so many CQL engine have in the world that supported. We have some and also we have some in, even in a transactional world that they started to support the branching. But now, in the iceberg, in the Apache Hive plus iceberg, we are able to create a branch on your table. Just imagine, you have a customer table, you are able to create a dev table, or a customer dev table, you are able to play it, you are able to tag it, you are able to, to delete actually from the, uh, from the branch table, and eventually if you like it, you are able to merge it, or you are able to tag it, you are able to drop it because I don't like it. This is, this is something that is new actually on the market, and it's coming out of the box. What, how to create it? Just because we are a hive, we always like the author table statements, sorry for us, and create branch, and create branch of the name, and add the branch of the name. After that, magically happens, and if you do not like it, drop the branch. Or, or you can, once you have done your audit, and you want to remember which snapshot you want to refer to, you can just tag it with the audit tag, and then you will have it ready whenever you need it. Okay, so as you know, I, uh, Iceberg creates snapshots. Whenever you insert data, update, or merge, or anything else, Iceberg creates new snapshots. To manage these snapshots, you need commands. So in this slide, we'll see the advanced snapshot management that Hive provides with simple Hive queries, okay? And all these features are available out of the box. You can download the Hive Docker image, and then start it and start executing. It is that simple, okay? The first one being time travel. Most of you may have heard of it. So say you have a uh, table that was created two years ago, but you want to see the state of the table one year ago, you can just run a time travel command to see the data. So towards the end of the presentation, we have a demo showing how you can do it. Okay, and next, you can manage the life cycle of snapshots with branch and tags, as you just saw in the previous slide, to confirm to your auditing and GDPR needs. Next, we also provide expert snapshots, which is essentially when you run out of storage in your Cloud provider, you can just expire the snap, old, very old snapshots, and try to reclaim some of your storage. And then a few other commands like list the snapshot, and then you can use rollback, which is really cool. Say you have a two year old table, and today you inserted some data that you're not happy with, and it corrupted your data, you can just roll it back uh, with a very simple high query. And we will show it soon. Okay? Okay. Puffy. Yeah. So, uh, okay, this is uh, specific to Hive. The, this is the Hive iceberg stats. Uh, we use Puffin to store the stats. So, a bit of background. So, whenever a cost-based optimizer, so cost-based optimizer, that is a CBO, uh, refer, uses the basic stats, column stats, and a bunch of other stats to generate the most optimized plan. Okay? 
Currently, Hive supports computing the stats, auto gathering the stats uh, for these iceberg tables as well. These stats are stored as a, in a Puffin blob as a Hive, a Hive column stats object, uh, and or they are also written to the HMS, and anyone can refer to the HMS to get that info. Okay, and next. Uh, these stats are used during query planning to generate optimized plans. So some of these stats include like row count, NDV, histogram, min max. A full list is available in this wiki link. Okay, in the next slide we will see how these stats affect the query planning uh, with respect to no number of distinct values. So here, as you can see, on the right hand side, it's the output of describe formatted. The, ta the table has three columns. Uh, there are totally 31 million rows in the table, but there are a lot of duplicates. Okay a lot of duplicates. So if you see on the left hand side, column stats, the first column has only three distinct values, second has six, and the third one has two. So in the next slide, we will run a explain query seeing the plan. So if you see the right hand side, it is without the stats, and you can see the group by operator is still seeing 31 million rows. Where on the, uh, uh, whereas on the left hand side, uh, <laughs> yeah, on the left hand side, you can see the stats are coming into effect and there are only three rows that are being read and which essentially makes your plan very fast. As a result, if you see this without stats and with stats comparison, if you see the reducer three, total number of tasks is 42 here and the total number of tasks is only two here. And the query is also faster. This is a simple query, that's why you don't see a very huge difference. With a more complicated query, this difference becomes more apparent. Okay. But also we have started to um, to think about the business needs and how we are able to maintain or how, what kind of table do we need on the market. Originally, the Hive itself supported the merge on read um, dilemma, and this is actually for most of the customers or most of the Hive users, it was a good enough solution. But also we've seen actually some of the big banks did not like actually those type of approach when they have more small, small files problem, and because of this one, they do not like actually too, many, too often to execute the compaction, to have some kind of table maintenance. And there is also two type of strategy that you have on, um, with the iceberg tables. Right now we have a strategy also for the copy on write or COV. And uh, this is up to you that how you would love to create your table. If you're, I would say, if you always want it to be the fastest query that is possible, that you will choose the COE, but of course you need to think about it, your write cost will be much, much, much more higher. It's de it depends on your strategy, it depends on your table. But now you have a flexibility that you choose. I would love to, I'm okay with the old approach and the MOR, I would say for the 80% of the users will be okay, but still you will have an option, okay, I would love to choose actually the COE. And uh, we also have a numbers around it that which is where it is better and how it is better. Okay. So if you're reading, uh, select queries run faster in copy and write mode compared to merge on read. That is, this is the case where we don't have compaction in the picture. Uh, and similarly for write, update queries run faster on merge on read compared to copy on write. If you see the graphs here, writes, the green bar merge on read takes only 11 seconds, uh, whereas copy on write takes 35 seconds. For the select queries, it's merge on read that's slower, uh, copy on write is faster. And then this was tested with the trickle feed data for one terabyte TPCDS parquet partitioned iceberg tables. And then there were a lot of delete and delta files when we took this measurement, uh, so that the difference is apparent. And the compaction. So yesterday also we have seen from the Impala team that there is in the compaction or the table maintenance is very important. If you do not, know, uh, if you do not use COV, um, even when you use it, uh, there are some kind of table maintenance all the time you need it. In a hive itself, we have a command that you, if you need actually a, com uh, a compaction, you are able to execute it. We have a major and minor compaction that is possible to use on top of the iceberg table. We have a, a separated uh, thread on the acid table as well. It is the same as before, but for the hive itself or the hive iceberg itself, you need to execute this um, command to execute the compaction. Also, as I mentioned, also that's because we are high, we always start actually with the alter table. But no, not everybody likes it, but we agreed with the Apache community itself to have something that is common. We have a syntactical sugar for the optimized table as well. The same thing, do the same part, just I would say in a more fashioned way. And the migration. So we talk about that, um, that you are able to use the 
Apache iceberg itself. But how I'm going to, to use my current workload on top of it? Because do I need to rewrite my files? It is always scary when you, as you started the ACID table, there was some kind of scare about it. But here, you do not need to. If you have a table, you have an external table, fine. But if you would love to utilize actually the iceberg itself, I would, there is a magic command that we did in the Hive community. Alter table, table name, convert to, and you need to provide the iceberg uh, table name. And within a second, those type of uh, table or external table that you had, it is possible to convert it into the iceberg table. And again, your data file won't touch. We are created, just because the iceberg magically elegant, from the architecture perspective, it is going to create a manifest file, manifest these snapshots, and you are able to start and utilize on your top of your current workload. So those type of features that you have seen, branching, time travel you are going to see, also maintenance, copy on write, merge on read, all the SQL part, it is magically you are able to, I would say, convert your current workload. In my mind, you are not able to lose anything to try it out. Okay. Uh, in, the, in this slide, uh, we'll, Hive also provides authentication and authorization with Hive Server 2. Okay. Uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway. You have to do yeah. it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so, authentication. So, Hive supports LDAP, Kerberos, and JWT. And when, when we come to authorization, we have the Hive Ranger plugin with which we can get access control for iceberg tables. So, Hive supports this through the Hive Ranger plugin. And then it also provides table level access and fine grained control, which is the column level access, row filtering and column masking right out of the box. You just have to configure Ranger to make it work with Hive and you should be good. In the next slide, we will see how we can use this table access and fine grained access uh, with a very simple demo. demo. Yeah. Okay. Don't scare, it is a terminal. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is a screenshot. So here you can see the select current user is Hive. So Hive is the admin user. And the Hive admin user has created a table with five columns. Uh, yeah, and here is the card number, okay? Uh, so, say some other user wants access, he shouldn't see your card numbers, he should only see the last four digits, and say uh, he shouldn't get access to one of these columns, okay? That's what we'll be demoing. To do that, we will consider a user named Levy and define two Ranger policies, okay? This is the first Ranger policy, which is the table access. So, as you can see here, this is the sales database, table sales, and the four columns out of five, which he has access to, and the user is Livy, and he has only select permission. And we have column access policy defined here, which basically masks the card number, okay? With the partial mask, which shows the last four, for the same Livy user. Once we have the setup, uh, the, when the Livy user lo I mean, connects via B-line as Livy user and tries to query this table, as you can see, the card numbers are masked. So we get the column masking readily available. Only f last four digits are available. And then if it tries to read the entire table, that is query all five columns, you can see there is a uh, Hive access control exception, uh, user is denied access to all the columns. So right out of the box, you'll get this feature. Uh, you just need to configure Ranger and a couple of policies and you should have it. And that's how easy it is to set up say, access control in Hive for this iceberg is, tables. Yeah, this is actually one of the most uh, sold, I would say, enterprise feature. They like it. They love it, actually, this type of thing. Uh, okay. Next slide is a demo, too many demos showing how it is. We'll skip that for now. Uh, and we'll move on to performance. So from the performance perspective, we, we did a lot. So, so many times, actually, in the past, we, we got hot and cold from the Hive community that we are not fast enough. We started to be fast enough. So um, to compare actually those type of non-iceberg table that we had in the past, if we, if we execute the same, for the same uh, one terabyte size of, of query, um, we will be 70% faster in the cloud than uh, for the non-iceberg table. So again, you remember that we, you just need to convert actually a table within a magic command and you will get 70% faster your, your data load, which is, I would say for a huge enterprise, it's, it's, it could be thousands or, or hundred thousands of dollars per year. They can save that how many compute, compute costs they use it. And we, 
And again, we tried it in AWS, but you, of course, actually, this is cloud agnostic. You can try it out even in Azure, even on a private cloud, whatever. It is possible. And uh, also, one thing, just a, uh, just a hint, if we don't use enterprise-ready features such as like HA, uh, it is, won't be as, um, or even if we, it will be faster. We have five minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, setup, a bit more detail about this. The setup was AWS, as you can see, with high version 4. Workers, instance of the workers and master is written there. And the data size is 1 terabyte parquet file stored in S3. And the table format is parquet with ranger, uh, I mean, with authorization and HA, which is a production setup. And as you can see, it took 7,342 seconds for iceberg tables to run all 99 queries of TPCDS on 1 terabyte. For the non iceberg tables, it's uh, basically parquet external hive tables. So that, that was the comparison in uh, speed. And the next slide, we have individual query runs, if you are interested in. Process uh, it? Yeah. Uh, so here is the spreadsheet with the actual numbers, absolute values, uh, and which you can look later. And then the green bar is iceberg, which is, if you see here, you'll notice it's faster compared to the red bar, which is non iceberg. So uh, please take a look when you have time. Uh, okay. Okay, and let's have a demo, actually. We have a couple of minutes and we are able to show it. Just because, like, we are the developers, we like the console window, so sorry about it, but we like it. Uh, we have a UI as well. You are able to use it even a Power BI or Hue or whatever, but we are developers, so. Uh, let's create, actually, a table and insert a cu couple of uh, rows in this case. So let's drop it, let's insert it. And as you can see, in the end of the, end of the row, there is a... Um, uh, so basically, we created by. a table. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so I'll highlight it here again, stored by. Uh, yeah, stored by. Uh, here, 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 here. here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We should probably make it bigger. Cool. Yeah, stored Hopefully. by iceberg. Okay. Yeah. And then we will uh, uh, query the metadata table to see uh, what's in this. So right now it should be empty because empty. we just created the table. Let's insert actually a couple of rows. This is right now we are inserting eight rows. So this is a classical insert command, nothing special. We are inserted, we, we can able to select it. And also we are able to sh show the histories as well. So let's have, this is the eight rows that we have here. And also as you can see, you are able to check, this is a, um, the snapshot ID. This is the first ID that is the first modification that happened on the table. Okay, let's describe it. So if you would love to have more details about it and you are really like actually the details of the table, you can get this uh, list and you can check that this is an iceberg table. So here are the iceberg survey input format, output format, and this is merge on read. Merge on read, and we use, par most of the time we use Sparky, but also if you are using ORC or Avro, it is also possible to use. In a, for the Hive, we, we started to, I would say, more dominantly use the Sparky itself. Here we'll be showing a metadata query, uh, basically. We are inserted actually in another two rows in this case. And as you can see, here is the new snapshot ID happened. So we have the first one, the original one, and we already inserted two rows, and we can insert another two rows. Okay. Now we have three snapshot ID which means the first one is eight row, two rows inserted, two rows inserted. And also, just because we are able to time travel, so this is one of the, I would say, most, most liked feature in the iceberg, there is, a, uh, there is a special command that where you are able to time travel. You need a four system version as of, and you need a snapshot ID that how it look like. So you can go back in time just to provide those snapshot ID, and right now you can see we have eight rows on those in the past. How, it, how the table looked like in the past. Yeah. And if you do not like actually, uh, if something goes wrong, because this is also a very cool feature about the iceberg, you are always, uh, you are always able to go back and roll it back your changes. So. You, it is, it is possible that, okay, I, I accidentally inserted or accidentally deleted some kind of rows. And still the snapshot is there. You, you can go back in time and roll it back for the exact part of the snapshot ID. So here the snapshot is the very first one. So we'll roll back to the first one. 
So execute rollback, also the snapshot ID. Let's go back in time. And if right now we have a new, new row, this is that, and in this case, we won't have 12 rows in the table. We only have eight because we went back in time. And this is super elegant again. Yeah, so this is the eight row table, which we went back to, rolled yeah. back to. We roll it back. So this is, I would say, again, it's a feeling that you, you have this opportunity to make a mistake, but also I would say it also has a possibility to try it actually with the branches, but this is, how can I say, this is so elegant. It is so beautiful that how uh, it's working out of the box. And also it is possible to create a branch for it. So we'll create a branch with this snapshot ID which corresponds to the second one here. Okay, uh, so we'll create a branch. So the branch is ready. Yeah, so we already created a branch. And you can try it, you select it, you play with the branch as well. And uh, we created a branch called audit branch. And if you do a metadata query, oops. Yeah, so this is the metadata query to see the branches. You can see two branches, the main branch and the audit branch. Okay. We are out of the time? Okay, so I think we are out of the time. Let's go back to actually for the, for the side. And we wanted to say thank you for all of you that came to here. And also we would love to thank you for the whole Hive community who made it happen. It's, uh, the Hive community is not just, I would say, it's come from the cloud, but it's all, all about the globe. And we are very grateful for all of the hard work that they put into the community to make this Hive 4.0 happen. And again, if you would love to try it out, you are able to download it from the Docker website. It is within a minute you are able to try it out and already 100,000 um, develop, uh, 100,000 uh, user downloaded the Docker images for the Hive, which so is it's, pretty cool. Yeah, it's like 96,000 right now, but the Docker doesn't update. It, let's, let's round it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And if you have any question, we are here.